Before each patch, we try our best to predict the meta before it evolves, but you know what they say, you can't predict the weather. And apparently, we couldn't predict the rise of Fury Warriors and Outlaw Rogues. <laughs> yeah, that's just a bit awkward, isn't it? <clears throat> anyway, today we have a full meta update for Season 3, so if you want to know how each melee DPS compares, stay tuned because this one is for you. But before we get into it, we wanted to remind you about Skill Cap's rating gain guarantee. Yes, that's right, we are so confident you will gain up to 400 rating while actively using our website that we give you a full refund if that doesn't happen. For $4.99 a month, you get instant access to over 600 premium quality videos, as well as an invite to the exclusive section of our Discord, where you can get the help you need with all of your PvP questions. So, what are you waiting for? Join over half a million lifetime users in the best learning experience WoW has to offer. Visit skillcap.com slash WoW today. Without wasting any more time, let's kick things off with the best of the best. Alright, so one prediction we got right this season was the strength of Survival Hunter, who might be one of the most well-rounded melee DPS in Season 3. They have it all, with some of the best damage, control, and survivability out of any DPS class. What really makes them insane in 9.2 is their over-budgeted tier set bonuses, which give them massive damage increases compared to other specs. This has made them exceptionally good across the board, but especially in 2v2, where survival is definitely in contention for the best spec in the entire bracket. What makes it so strong is how how consistent its damage truly is, even outside of cooldowns. And with mechanics like Steel Trap and Craven Stratagem, survival is really good at fending for itself, especially against the increasingly popular Assassination Rogue, who they counter completely in the 2v2 bracket. Next up on our list, we have another prediction we still feel confident in, with Sub Rogue taking up another slot on the S tier. As we always say, Sub is really difficult to place on our tier list. On one hand, it's the spec that needs a bit of a carry to truly express its toolkit. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride, needing a fire mage or holy priest to elevate it to the next level. But on the other hand, with access to the best comp WoW has to offer, Sub seems to solidify itself as one of the best specs in Arena, period. And sometimes it's good to be results driven, and if you want to continue to have the best results of any melee class, play sub RMP again in Season 3. With Holy Priest having one of the best tier sets even after recent hotfixes, and Fire Mages continuing their dominance in Shadowlands, it seems like a no brainer to go sub rogue this season. But now for the first time ever, we are adding a whole new tier. Okay, so let's introduce the Maybe S category with Outlaw Rogues. Depending on what expert player we asked, each of them had a slightly different opinion about Outlaw. We understand why it might be so polarizing. For one, the spec has tons of potential this season, with increased conduit levels offering more cooldown reduction on key defensives, while the ability to equip double legendaries has given them even more kill power thanks to Echoing Reprimand's interaction with Restless Blades. This is one of the most unknown passive ability combos in the game, and is at the core of what makes Outlaw so broken. And if all of this cooldown reduction wasn't enough, there's even more thanks to the invigorating Shadow Dust Legendary. All of these things combined make Outlaw Rogues really difficult to play against since they have completely disjointed cooldowns which are nearly impossible to track even with add-ons. Even though their representation is relatively low, this spec has enormous potential for Season 3. And with our god tier out of the way, let's go over some honorable mentions. Starting with Assassination. Look, we told you before how insane the set bonuses are for our little Asa Rogue friends, and even after recent hotfixes, their damage is still really insane during cooldowns, thanks to about 9 different modifiers that happen every time Kidney Vendetta Sepsis is pressed. One of the biggest reasons Assassination is looking so good now has nothing to do with the spec itself and more to do with the entire Priest class. With Night Fae becoming the covenant of choice for Holy and Shadow, Asa Rogues get huge cooldown reduction on Vendetta thanks to Fae Guardians and its respective Legendary, giving them even more kill windows in 9.2. While rogues are looking good across the board, we have three specs that can actually challenge RMP this season, starting with Unholy DK. Coming off a of lackluster season 2, Unholy DK is definitely back to chew some bubblegum this season. So what makes Unholy so good? Well, there are a few reasons. For one, the ability to equip double legendaries has elevated Unholy to a new level, with Abomination Limb doing huge damage thanks to the Abomination's Frenzy Legendary. And probably more important to its rise this season is how well it does against caster DPS thanks to Rune of Spell Warding and its Spell Warden PvP talent. Together, these effects help slow the game down, literally, as they apply casting speed reduction to affected enemies. This comes with the Necrotic Wounds PvP talent, which makes them slightly tankier than their Frost counterparts. In any case, with Mages and Warlocks running the majority of the latter, having a DK in your team is a massive advantage. 
One comp that might be slept on hard this season is Unholy TSG. This comp is a massive execution test for any healer, especially at lower ratings where the onslaught of damage can be really difficult to deal with. Following DKs, we have two specs that you might see play together a lot this season, starting with Enhancement Shaman. Enhancement has changed dramatically since last season, as Doomwinds has cycled out of their burst rotation. Replacing it are class-specific and Venther legendaries, which together give Shaman significantly more Maelstrom generation on top cooldown reduction for Chain Harvest. If one thing should be clear by now, it's that cooldown reduction is king of Season 3. But surely there are other reasons why Enhance is so valuable, right? Well, aside from the fact that it gives its team extra bulk thanks to highly efficient off heals, having both Grounding Totem and Wind Shear are incredibly useful in this Mage Lock meta. These tools together help deny the seemingly endless barrage of Chaos Bolts that make comps like MLP so dominant on ladder. As far as comps are concerned, Turbo Cleave is doing really well right now, even into Rogue Mage. And speaking of Turbo Cleave, Fury Warriors are joining the high tiers this season. Along with Outlaw Rogues, this is one spec we really undervalued preseason. Its tier set is what truly elevates the spec to the high tiers, as having more raging blow stacks and the ability to proc recklessness gives Fury Warriors increased rage regeneration, which helps them maintain slaughterhouse stacks and allows them to play reckless abandon for massive raging blow hits. All of this combined gives them enormous pressure when paired with the sustained damage of an enhancement shaman or the control of a fire mage. Fury seems to be pulling ahead in the arms race of the warrior class. Although it lacks some of the utility options of its other spec counterparts, it doesn't really matter too much given that its best comp options are full of control and utility anyway. With the highest tiers accounted for, let's move on to the A tier, starting with a familiar damage lord. Yes, Windwalker monks take our spot as the first melee on the A tier. Their tier set bonuses are some of the best of any DPS class, adding even more damage modifiers to their insanely strong burst damage. With that in mind, monks have had sort of a weird role in comp building in recent months, where they can do really well with fire mages and holy priests, so long as a rogue or warrior isn't taking up that second DPS slot. A similar problem happens in 2v2, where monks get overshadowed by some of the higher tier melee, which can make it a bit difficult to climb the ladder when it's a never-ending barrage of meta classes. But again, the thing that really helps carry Windwalker Monk is its insane burst damage output, which is really effective at scoring wins at lower brackets. The second damage god joining the A tier is Demon Hunter. If there's one thing DH is best at, it's being an execution test for any healer in any bracket. The spec continues to have some of the most threatening damage thanks to long meta combined with Necrolord damage buffs. One thing that definitely helps Demon Hunters this season is their passive magic damage reduction thanks to Demonic Wards and Viscous Ink. Together, these two spells give DH a slightly better time against mages and warlocks. And of course, with some of the best mobility in the game, it's not that difficult for Demon Hunters to win the mobility race against the meta wizards. Altogether though, Demon Hunters are still really good, despite the fact that their best comp from last season isn't nearly popular. With Boomkins falling behind in 9.2, DH is better suited for playing with DKs, who offer even more defense against spell damage, while also being pseudo damage gods themselves. Rounding out the A tier, we have Feral Druid, who we might have undervalued in our preseason prediction. Initially, it seemed like key defensive nerfs might hold the spec back from doing well in Season 3. However, that doesn't seem to be the case, as Feral Druids have still found a footing in the high tiers thanks to the continued strength of Jungle Cleave. This kind of gives it the same strength as Sub Rogue, that its main job is to elevate two other meta classes. But unlike Sub, Feral has a few other comp options, and while RMP might be a better comp overall, it still has a losing matchup into Jungle Cleave. And since RMP doesn't seem to be going anywhere, Ferals can still act as pseudo gatekeepers for the most dominant comp in the meta. Unfortunately, our next two specs have seen the biggest fallout in 9.2, dropping down from their dominance in the beginning of the expansion. Arms Warrior is probably the most tragic story of this season, dropping down significantly after a year-long reign. In case you weren't aware, Defensive Stance saw a significant nerf in 9.2, which set the spec noticeably behind as some comps were already starting to kill warriors in arena. So here's the situation. Arms Warriors aren't really bad at all, it's just that the current meta is a bit unforgiving. A lot of their strength in Season 1 and 2 was tied to being able to shut down enemy melee thanks to mechanics like Intervene and Disarm. Unfortunately, you can't disarm a Chaos Bolt cast, at least from everything we've tested. So with the meta shifting in the direction of Mage Lock and with Fury offering more sustained pressure, Arms has fallen off the highest tiers this season. A similar problem happened with Rhett Paladins, mostly because they generally played with Arms Warriors in Season 1 and 2. Again, Rhett Paladins aren't bad by themselves, it's just that the meta has evolved in a way that has made it harder for them to do consistently well. 
With Mage Lock being one of the most popular comps, Rhett Paladins might have a much more difficult time climbing the ladder, especially as RMP continues to gatekeep at higher ratings. Of course, there were some objectively negative changes that came with the patch, including a nerf to Word of Glory, which set back their utility by a small margin. In any case, the problem with both Rhett Paladins and Arms Warriors has more to do with the current state of the game, where their primary comp is now significantly weaker at dealing with the current meta giants. That brings us to the last melee on our list, which requires us to go down to the B tier. If you've been keeping track, it's obviously Frost DK, and no, we're not calling Frost DK bad at all. Being on the B tier is good, and clearly melee DPS are in a really good spot overall in Shadowlands. But you might be asking, how can Frost be that much worse than Unholy? Again, Frost isn't bad, but its playstyle is just far more linear compared to Unholy, which has dramatically limited Frost DK comp options, since it pretty much has one win condition. The entirety of its toolkit is centered around Death Grip, Blinding Sleet, and AoE stuns. The problem right now is that so many of the meta classes have multiple tools to just survive these massive grip stun combos. Holy Priests, for example, are simply able to fade the damage if it's meant for themselves, or grip the stun if it's aimed at their partners. And once the DK's setup fails, it's just a waiting game to get to the next one. And good luck waiting when a Frost Mage is able to blast your entire team for a minute straight. So just to recap, here is how the meta seems to be shaping up for the middle of Season 3. We know there were a lot of subcategories again, but honestly it's just because most melee are just so good that we need a bit of granularity to set them apart. One spec you definitely want to keep an eye on is Outlaw Rogue, who could actually replace sub in an alt version of RMP. But we want to know what you think! What spec do you think might be Sleeper OP later on this season? Let us know in the comments below. And once again, we should let you know about our rating gain guarantee at skillcap.com slash wow. If you'd like to learn more about PvP, we got over 600 videos to help you out, including class courses that show you how to play your specs, and hundreds of arena commentaries where pro players break down gameplay step by step. Joining today will also give you instant access to the premium section of our Discord, where our team of expert players can answer all of your PvP questions. $4.99 is all it takes to get access to all of our exclusive features and get the rating you've always wanted. So what are you waiting for? Check out skillcap.com slash wow. All right, guys, that wraps up today's video. This was a long one, but let us know how we did by leaving a comment below. If you're interested in seeing more, be sure to subscribe to help us both out. We do more than just tier lists on this channel, and chances are we have something just for you. But as always, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.